Okay, go on. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to EDP and Applied Mathematics Seminar. It's a pleasure for me to open session 38 of this seminar. Today, we have two excellent speakers, Miroslav Krstik and Luis Farah. Introducing Miroslav Krstik, we have to Professor Max Holtz. Thank you, Max, you can start. Thank you, Juan, and thank you, Professor Krstik, for accepting our invitation. Uh, it's quite hard to talk, to talk about, uh, I mean, to talk about Professor Krstik without, uh, I mean, uh, connotation to his uh, outstanding research output and outstanding uh, recognition. So instead of listing all the recognitions and uh, say, I'll just say that we're very pleased that you could, could accept our invitation. And uh, uh, Professor Krstik today is gonna talk to us about positivity, non undershooting control barrier functions and safe control of PDs, which is certainly one very important topic nowadays. So thank you once again for accepting our invitation and the screen is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Souza. Thank you, Professor Limaco. Uh, thank you all for uh, showing up for, for this lecture. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, the, the community uh, works on uh, things that interest me and I'm very, very glad to, to have a chance to share a few uh, results with you. So my work is uh, in the area of control partial differential equations. And uh, let me just be, uh, define it up front what I mean by control of partial differential equations. I don't work on controllability. I work on stabilization. And this particular talk uh, has stabilization as one of the objectives, but uh, the main focus is not just stabilization. The, the, the focus is stabilization in the presence of constraints on the state. So if you look at this long title, with words like positivity, that clearly refers to a, a constraint on the state, that the state, the distributed state of the partial differential equation system is not allowed to um, go negative or, or become zero. Uh, undershooting or overshooting refers to a violation of a constraint of a constraint also, some kind of an output of the system. Uh, um, if it uh, undershoots, uh, that uh, leads to possible to a possible physical damage or a violation of the model. Uh, the word safe control refers to um, more broadly uh, uh, the non-violation of state cons constraints. And this, this is uh, these days uh, the predominantly popular term to refer to uh, what's in the past been referred to as um, uh, control subject to state constraints. Why safe control? Well, it is because the subject uh, of control in the presence of state, safe con uh, constraints has been sort of taken over by one of the most important applications of control subject to state constraints. And this is uh, autonomous driving in the presence of obstacles. I think we will agree that that's, that's perhaps the most obvious control situation where uh, uh, respecting uh, constraints on the position uh, is is very important. It's a, it's a matter of of uh, life and death, or at least of, of a, a great financial consequence. So um, these days, um, uh, uh, control subject state constraints goes by the name safe control often, and uh, the the phrase control barrier functions uh, in the title refers to a particular approach to control in the presence of uh, state constraints. Uh, control design employing the so-called barrier functions, functions that, that either blow up or become zero where, uh, where the um, state uh, reaches the, uh, uh, the, uh, the boundary uh, or the constraint. Okay, so I have, uh, um, I have, uh, I have four results to share with you. They're a collection of results over the past, I don't know, seven, eight years or, or, or so. Uh, three of them uh, very recent, uh, the three rightmost uh, topics, the control of motion of a liquid uh, inside a tank, the control of, um, of a pair of pistons with a gas between them, and the so-called uh, control of the so-called Stefan PDOD model, namely the uh, the model of phase transition, which is a PD 
with a moving boundary which is governed by uh, an ordinary differential equation. These these three results uh, date from from the last couple of years, whereas the first result that I will cover, uh, which goes by the name chemostat, or you can think of it as a bioreactor or a population dynamics system, that goes back several more years. <clears throat> These results have a one thing in common, that they all uh, come with some constraints on the state, uh, typically positivity. Uh, in, we want the population of a bacterial or, or, or a viral um, population uh, to have a positive density. We cannot have negative, a negative density of, of a <clears throat> biological population. Um, in a tank, we want to make sure that there is no spillage. So it's, it's a different kind of a state uh, constraint. Uh, in a gas, uh, we have to ensure uh, that whatever control we design um, maintains a positive uh, density or a positive pressure. Other otherwise, we we are running into a violation of both both the uh, uh, both the physical and model violation. And finally, uh, the so-called Stefan model of of the um, uh, phase transition uh, refers to a range of applications. Classically, in the late uh, 1800s, uh, Joseph Stefan introduced this model as a model of, um, uh, of a change of phase between uh, solid and, and liquid. Uh, and that's what conventionally this model stands for, and it has applications uh, from um, uh, from uh, the from uh, the sea ice uh, dynamics in uh, climate modeling to, uh, for example, additive manufacturing, where, where you have to melt a material, possibly a metal, in order to uh, build up um, an object. So uh, the state constraint here is that uh, as, uh, as, as material melts, uh, you have to ensure that as you melt or freeze, that, that you um, uh, that, 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 that you maintain uh, the, uh, the value of temperature that is above the melting point and prevent the creation of, let's, let's call them islands of solid within the liquid, because that would, that, that would violate both the model and uh, result in things uh, that physically are undesirable. So why do I have this table here? <clears throat> uh, because while these four problems have state constraints in common, and the state constraints are all quite different between them, uh, there, there are lots of differences among them as well. And I just want to, to, uh, to give a landscape of those differences. So uh, first of all, the, the three uh, topics here all uh, include more than just, one, uh, just a PD. They also include an OD. Whereas the chemostat, the population dynamics, is just an, a PD problem. There's no D. Uh, for, uh, as far as the moving boundary is concerned, it's present in the piston and the Stefan problem, but not, not in the other two. Um, one of the models is hyperbolic. One is purely parabolic. And two of them are a mix of hyperbolic and uh, parabolic PDs. Those might interest you the most, uh, I, I assume, but they're all um, uh, interesting in, in their own ways. Some of these uh, models have classical conventional additive inputs, uh, but two of them have multiplicative inputs, which is less, less conventional in uh, uh, control problem formulations. Um, and so on. Um, let me uh, let me see. I, I I I have to get to the point. I have to skip some of these things. I, I would say here this this blue check mark that runs along the whole row of the table indicates that none of these models are open loop unstable, but all of these models uh, are only uh, marginally stable. In other words, all of them have an eigenvalue at zero, and needs to be asymptotically or exponentially stabilized. 
Okay, so none of these problems are extremely challenging stabilization problems, but none of them are totally trivial. Um, none of them are already uh, asymptotically stable. <coughs> um, and uh, the last row, I would say, uh, uh, when it, where I say that uh, I use the feedback of the full state, uh, where there is a check mark, namely that I use feedback of the full state, that indicates that the control problems are more challenging. Because if you only need to use the feedback of some boundary value, uh, that's an easy control problem. When you have to feed the information from the whole state, either to measure it or to estimate it, that typically uh, uh, is, a, is a more challenging control problem. So let me now get started with the first of these four topics. <clears throat> so the first topic is the so-called chemostat, but here it is an expanded name of the term chemostat. Uh, you can think of that as a biological reactor uh, with distributed age. What am I talking about here by a biological reactor? I'm talking about any, any system, either <clears throat> an engineering system in which bacteria or viruses or some other biological material is grown and it can be it can range from the pharmaceutical in industry to the beer industry where there is yeast growth to um, natural uh, biological systems. We ourselves are bioreactors. We carry populations of, uh, of bacteria and viruses. Some of them are totally normal and, and indispensable, such as in, in our uh, digestive system. And others are, you know, those those that, that give us COVID and, and uh, get us into, into hospitals. Uh, <clears throat> when we get, the, get a vaccine for COVID and are building the immunity, we are a bioreactor. And when I say a distributed age, I mean, I'm talking about uh, not, not a pop population in bulk, but a population whose age I'm tracking from the newborns to the old ones and, 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 and finally, uh, the old um, population that dies out. So here's the model. <coughs> so the state of this system um, is denoted by F. <coughs> so this is the, the population density. Uh, T is time, A is age. Age is in an, um, uh, in an interval from the zero age, namely birth, to the capital A age, which is, which is the, the maximum possible age for that biological population. Uh, mu is the death rate, which may be age related. Typically it will be age related. Uh, you, will, you will see much fewer natural deaths among the young ones than among the old ones. And <clears throat> most importantly, the control input is this D. Uh, but uh, bioengineers and chemical engineers refer to this as the dilution rate. And I don't have time to explain why they call it. They, they call it so because in engineering systems, uh, you have to dilute and you have to take out uh, uh, some part of the mixture of, <coughs> of the sugar with which you feed uh, the growing population and to take it out to uh, extract, uh, extract some of the population so you can put more, more food in. We can think of this simply as the harvesting rate, that we are harvesting some of the population, we're removing the population uh, because we, we want it, we need it. And, and that's, um, uh, that's what D is, the rate of removal or the harvesting of the population. Uh, so there's a boundary condition to this hyperbolic PD. It is a non-local boundary condition. It is being applied at the birth uh, end of the age spectrum, namely at A equals zero. And you see this integral operator, which is, uh, which is an inner product of the current dis uh, age distributed state F with, the, uh, with some uh, kernel, this kernel K of A, which is called the motherhood uh, kernel. This kernel simply uh, says that, um, uh, the uh, the birth will be given uh, 
by populations that are not by, by, by populations at different ages, but typically uh, at very low age, uh, there will be no giving of, of birth until let's call it puberty, and then and then there will be uh, there will there will be a period of fertility and giving birth, uh, and and then at later age. So this K K of A will 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 be a, a function that that have, has a limited support in the interval uh, from zero to capital A. Um, <clears throat> Let, let me now talk about the equilibrium of this system. Uh, so this system uh, can have uh, many, infinitely many, a uh, continuum of uh, equilibria. All these equilibria are, um, have an exponential decay in age. This is intuitive. Uh, intuitive that you're going to, uh, at an equilibrium, you're going to have more young ones than the old ones. Uh, but how big the population will be depends on, on the uh, density of the population at birth. And this density can have various values, and this is why there's a continuum of equilibrium. Um, however, an equilibrium can be created only with one fixed unique value of the dilution or harvesting rate. So there's only one number that is independent of the initial conditions. It just depends on the parameters of the model, namely the motherhood uh, kernel and the, um, and the death rate uh, coefficient. And that special single uh, uh, harvesting rate has a very uh, intuitive uh, meaning. Uh, there is only one particular harvesting rate with, with which you're going to neither um, uh, basically have the population die out because you harvest too much, nor the population explode because you don't harvest enough. Uh, however, even though there is this unique um, input value that can generate equilibria, it is not only one equilibrium that it generates, but it generates infinitely many possible equilibria. And that's, that's what the problem, the control, uh, that's what gives rise to a control problem. You uh, may want in an engineering application to regulate the system to a particular equilibrium profile rather than letting uh, um, the system settle to an equilibrium profile that depends on the initial condition. Uh, so there is one eigenvalue at the, at the origin, and uh, it, we want to shift that one uh, to the left. The rest are, are in the left, so we want to make sure that they don't get, that they don't uh, spill over into the unstable uh, <clears throat> part of the complex plane. So let me give you <clears throat> a quick theorem that uh, states the control law, and it states a stability result along with a uh, constraint, constraint non-violation um, result. So here's the feedback law. Uh, what I uh, would like you to not focus on is the presence of the saturation operator. This saturation operation is simply for engineering reasons. We want to make sure that we, uh, we don't do unlimited harvesting and we also make sure that we don't attempt to make negative harvesting, which means the insertion of the population into something that is not not uh, not meant to be fed with the population, but to to uh, produce the population. So ignore the saturation, uh, you know, for mathematical purposes. So this feedback law contains the equilibrium setting value, the star of the harvesting rate, plus a feedback component. So uh, this feedback component, uh, as, as you see, um, the main thing in it is the full state feedback across all, uh, across the entire age range from zero to capital A of the population dynamics. Uh, this feedback, as you can see, seems to be an age mean of the population density. It doesn't have to be actually a, an age mean, it can be, any kind of a positive kernel here, but for the simplicity of notation, I'm just taking the age mean, the mean age. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the mean uh, population density across all uh, ages. Now, in addition to this feedback, which 
it's kind of natural that that, that, that you would that this is sort of like a measure of the of the of the total uh, uh, population. In addition to um, modulating the harvesting rate based on the uh, to total population, there's this other stuff: the division by uh, by the same uh, expression and the equilibrium and the ln. Well, uh, and this is another way of saying that we want to regulate f to the desired equilibrium profile F star, except that this is expressed in a somewhat unconventional uh, way through, uh, through a ratio rather than uh, through a difference. Uh, and with the ln, where when F becomes F star, this whole thing becomes one and ln becomes zero. So when we achieve our objective, there is no feedback uh, uh, being applied anymore. So this is, this is the simple control law. And, let me show you before I, uh, I give you the claim of the theorem. Uh, let me show you a simulation that, that illustrates what, what it does. So what you see here on the top is the evolution of the uh, density of the population of newborn zone only. I'm not showing you the, the older population. I'm just showing you the newborns. And uh, what you should see on this plot, uh, this is time. What you should, you should see on this plot is First, that the black curve in which we are not applying feedback is showing that the population of newborns settles to some value, but that value is not the desired value, the dotted value. However, if we apply feedback, then you see that we converge to the desired value of the population of newborns and of the entire population as well, which I'm not, not showing. Uh, and I'm showing here two feedback laws. One is that is using uh, feedback of the mean over the, the whole uh, population age. And the other one that is using essentially uh, a delta function uh, under the integral to extract only the population of the newborns themselves. And both of these feedback laws uh, uh, achieve the desired regulation. What I'm showing you here is <clears throat> Uh, th this harvesting rate control. Uh, and uh, I'm showing here something that is not in the theorem, namely an engineering application using sample data, using a sample data uh, implementation rather than a continuous control implementation. So this even works if we apply a piecewise um, constant version of that feedback from the previous uh, picture. And, and a theorem can be stated, but I, I don't have time to get into all those details. So you see, you, see, uh, uh, you see how this works and how it is meant, meant to work. Let me now get, get to the mathematical result. So the mathematical guarantee here <clears throat> is of a certain form of asymptotic stability in a particular norm that is suited for this uh, for for this problem. So let me first take care. Uh, so, so let me first say that there is a certain norm of the state. The state is f of ta. I will discuss this norm in a second. But let me uh, emphasize that uh, the guarantee is that uh, that norm of the state or the, the that norm of the state error or the state deviation from the uh, equilibrium is guaranteed to decay exponentially uh, to zero. Uh, now, what is what is this norm? What is what is it saying? Well, uh, this is a somewhat unusual norm. This is not L two. This is not the supremum norm of F, but it's the max norm of the ln, namely of the of a de deviation of the uh, state from its uh, desired equilibrium expressed in terms of the ln of the ratio. This becomes uh, one at the equilibrium. Ln becomes zero. Uh, and and um, and um, uh, that is what what you want to minimize. Uh, let me also add. Let me also straight stress that this type of a norm also ensures the uh, absence of the violation of the constraint. The constraint here is the positivity of the population density, namely that we don't we never uh, end up. Uh, with a result where the model is telling us that our popul population density has gone negative at some in some age group. That is being prevented here. There are two equilibria in this problem. 
One is the, uh, um, the zero equilibrium, F equals zero, where the entire population is dead, and the other one is the desired equilibrium. So this, this particular estimate ensures that for all equilibria other than the completely dead population from which you cannot create, generate growth by feeding it. So except for that initial condition, for all initial conditions where there is even some uh, small amount of initial population, uh, we converge to the desired uh, profile F star. Uh, there's also the effect of the initial condition on, on the right in terms of the same norm and in terms of what we call a class K infinity function of uh, that uh, measure of the initial condition. <clears throat> Let me now uh, move on. Uh, the proof. Um, the proof is very interesting. I believe that I'm running out of time to discuss the proof here. Uh, the proof is very interesting because uh, it em 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 employs a decomposition of this infinite dimensional system into one scalar OD, uh, which is the, whose state is denoted by eta, and uh, a dynamical system, which is not a partial differential equation, but it is an integral delay, delay integral equation rather than a delay differential equation. And uh, the, the analysis uh, of, of this system uh, mostly focuses on the behavior of this infinite dimensional part of the system. I will have to skip that. So there's a very interesting proof of something that is called the ergodic theorem, which for which we provide a Lyapunov-like -like version, but I have to move on to, uh, to my topic number two. So the topic number two is the movement of a tank with liquid from some initial position to a set point position, to a desired position denoted by A star, uh, where we want to make sure that there is no spilling, that's the constraint. Also that uh, the height of the liquid remains positive. In other words, uh, we, we, don't get, uh, we don't get to, to a situation where, where the bottom is empty at any location in this tank. And we focus on a, on, on a liquid that uh, has viscosity. This is the first piece of work uh, on, uh, on viscous uh, liquid um, transfer with a tank. All the previous work uh, has been for inviscid uh, liquids. Uh, the um, viscosity in our approach um, is not just new, we also, we, we actually need it. It's, it's a necessity. We rely on uh, viscosity to achieve the result. So what is the model? Uh, the model is the, the so-called Saint-Venant uh, set of equations that model the height and the velocity distribution along the length of the um, tank. Um, a force acts on the tank and the tank has two states. One is the velocity of the tank and the other one is the position of the tank. So the, the entire uh, dynamical system is two PDEs and two ODEs and, and boundary conditions uh, at the walls of the, of the tank. The approach to the control design is based on a controlled Lyapunov function. So we develop a Lyapunov function uh, whose derivative we're able to make negative by a choice of a feedback law. This control the upper function is, is quite non-trivial. Uh, there are parts that are trivial. Uh, the energy functions here that come simply from physics, namely this kinetic energy and this potential energy of the liquid, that's, that's the obvious part that you would, would uh, incorporate in, in a study of, of, a, of a system without control. But then additionally, there's this modified kinetic energy, which is crucial for our control design. And also uh, a Lyapunov function contribution for the um, tank itself, which is this rigid body uh, uh, part of the overall PDOD uh, system. So this is the overall control Lyapunov function. And using that control Lyapunov function, we arrive at the following control law. 
The input is the force acting on the tank. This is the expression for the feedback law. Let's briefly examine what's in it before I say what it guarantees. So this, this force that acts on the tank uses feedback of the total momentum, the inner product of the height and the velocity, plus a difference between the uh, liquid heights at the two boundaries, at the two ends of the tank, plus feedback of the velocity of the tank, plus feedback of the position of the tank. Uh, which, which, is, which, which is what we are regulating to. Our, our goal is really to move the tank without spilling the, the fluid. The fluid is, 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 is not really the object here, but at the end we want, want it to settle uh, as uh, the tank achieves the, the set point. What is it that we achieve? Well, let's me, let me start from the bottom. We achieve an exponential regulation of all the states to their set points. The, uh, the position will reach its destination, the velocity will reach zero, both for the tank and for the liquid, and the, uh, the liquid height will settle to a constant equilibrium uh, value. But that is not the main thing that worries us. The main thing that worries us is that we do not spill the liquid and that the bottom uh, of the tank does not uh, get empty anywhere. So this is actually the, the main uh, focus of the result, preventing the, the spillage, keeping the height of the liquid below some maximal height of the walls of the tank, which are given. H max may be high or it may be low. So what condition do we impose in order to not spill? Um, there are two conditions. One is on the initial data and the other one is on a feedback gain. First of all, the initial data need to be such that the initial velocity uh, and the initial height uh, is not already violating um, uh, the condition. So there needs to be some sufficient closeness of the initial velocity and height of the uh, liquid profiles to the equilibrium. Um, the other condition is a condition that the gain on the position must not be too large. In other words, the control must not be too aggressive. So intuitively, you have, you have to move, but you cannot you can not move very aggressively uh, with this tank. So that's, that's the result number two. Let's, let's go to this other uh, topic with a, with a fluid, but this one is a compressible fluid. The previous one was, was an, uh, was a tank with a with a, with a, with an open water profile, and this one is with a with an enclosed fluid, but with compressibility. We have uh, two pistons and an input, a force input on one of the pistons. So this is the actuated piston. This piston is unactuated. The goal here uh, is to uh, apply an input so that the gas motion and the piston motion settle to an equilibrium, not to a particular position. That's not possible actually to, to regulate the, the free piston to some desired position, but uh, to regulate the velocity, all the velocities and all the densities uh, to settle. So <clears throat> uh, we start with a model. It may look to you a little a little similar to, uh, to the Sembanam uh, model. There are some similarities, but there, there are also differences. The states here are quite different. Uh, the density state and the velocity state, uh, there is uh, viscosity in one of the equations. And um, just like uh, there is one OD for the tank in the liquid tank problem, there are two such ODs for the two pistons um, in this problem. Uh, the input is being applied only on the left uh, piston. So uh, we need to control the upon function for the design. You will find this slide quite similar to the previous one. This is, this is on purpose. 
things are uh, there is there is a consistent approach here, which is similar. So uh, the uh, the Lyapunov function consists of a, of an expected portion, namely the total energy, the kinetic rho v, uh, v squared plus the potential energy q of rho, where q is some increasing function uh, related to the to the pressure p. Plus this modify, modification to the kinetic energy, which is crucial for the control design, plus uh, the, uh, uh, the um, <clears throat> kinetic energy and, and a modification of the kinetic energy uh, on the two pistons. So with that level of uh, function, we design a control law. And let me review this control law first before I talk about the results. So U is the force acting on the left piston. Uh, what is fed back, the measured quantities that are fed back are A dot and rho, the density at the actuated piston. So A dot is the speed of the actuated piston. So when you see that the force is proportional to the negative of the velocity of the piston, you should immediately say, oh, this is just the damping. This is derivative feedback of the position. And that's exactly what it is. It's a very simple feedback law. But additionally, because of the presence of the PD, uh, there is this part, which involves the viscosity itself, which is non-constant, non uh, and the value of the viscosity specifically at the location of the actuated uh, piston. So what is the result? The result is, again, an exponential regulation to an equilibrium, where the equilibrium means that the um, gas piston overall system comes to rest, the rest being uh, an equilibrium density and uh, an, um, uh, zero velocity for both the gas, distributed zero velocity, and, uh, and the ve velocities of the two, two pistons. So that's, that's, um, that's the objective, but the constraint is the, the important thing for us. And the constraint that we set, uh, achieve uh, here is that the density remains strictly positive. In other words, there is no rarefaction. There is no, no uh, zero density anywhere in, in the gas. Uh, this result is achieved in what we call a semi-global fashion. In other words, for arbitrarily large initial conditions, which in, we can uh, uh, choose uh, appropriate uh, control gains to, um, to achieve this exponential um, uh, stabilization, with uh, with a with a constraint uh, maintenance. All right, let me now uh, get to the fourth uh, result in my list. So the fourth result is uh, on the so-called um, uh, on, on the so-called um, uh, Stefan model of the phase change, uh, and I'm focusing on a particular aspect of controlling uh, the phase change uh, model. Uh, which is called safety. So let me briefly tell you something about uh, how safety is being uh, formulated in the context of control barrier uh, functions. So control barrier functions are functions of the state. Uh, I denote them as H of X of T, where H is a scalar and X is either a vector in an ODE system or, or a function in a PD system, a function of, uh, of, of space. And uh, uh, maintaining safety is the property that you have a, uh, a, a, a non-negative valued function H, uh, which is non-negative in the safe region of the state space, and zero at the position where the constraint is, and uh, safety, uh, safety is the property that you design a controller and establish uh, analytically that, uh, that the rate of change of this barrier function, of this, this positive value barrier function, is lower bounded by the, the negative of H. What this means by comparison principle, uh, the, the, a simple intuitive uh, a lay meaning is that uh, you may be approaching the safety barrier of this system, but not faster than exponentially. 
In other words, you can approach uh, the, 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 um, the safety violation, but you uh, are guaranteed never to get to uh, the barrier before infinite time. So you remain safe for all time. Um, so that's, that's a general principle, which is developed in a much more complicated way for the Stefan model of uh, phase transition and uh, material growth. Four minutes, Professor Krislik. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, Thank you. I'm sorry. Four minutes. Okay. Yes, I'll 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 be I'll be done. Thank you. Uh, so <clears throat> this is the Stefan model. Uh, the Stefan model is a, uh, is a model of thermal dynamics governed by the heat equation, uh, where uh, the boundary changes as the solid material melts and becomes liquid. So S is a, is, a, is a scalar state of an ordinary differential equation. T is governed by the heat equation. And at the input of this system, we have an integrator which represents some, some uh, first order differential equation that, that uh, models the uh, dynamics of a heating process. So we are applying a heat flux at the, at the boundary, but we're uh, inducing the heat flux, for, for example, by a voltage applied to a heater. So uh, this is a, a temperature profile. And as the time evolves, S moves to the right. So the boundary expands. You get more and more liquid. Uh, and the temperature uh, is supposed to be regulated to uh, an equilibrium temperature, the melting temperature. Because as long as the temperature is above the melting point, the uh, interface between the solid and the liquid will keep moving to, to the right. So the goal, the goal is to regulate the, the, uh, the, the uh, melting interface to a set point SR. Um, so uh, this problem involves several barrier functions. One barrier function requires that the temperature uh, does not drop below the melting temperature. In other words, no islands of solid get created uh, within the liquid. Uh, the second barrier function is the most important one. It's this what, what looks like a complicated expression if, if, if you're you know, a mathematics or, or a control person, if you're a thermo, uh, thermal science person, this is obvious to you. This is, this is simply the total, total energy uh, uh, deficit of, of that uh, system. Uh, the third barrier function is the heat flux. The heat flux must not uh, go negative. You may not be cooling the system because if, the moment you cool the boundary, you get, you get a frozen island uh, at the boundary. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, uh, there is yet another fourth uh, barrier function, which is produced by uh, making a, uh, transformation of the state um, of, of, of the states uh, of the temperature, um, the interface position, and the heat flux state uh, using this stepping transformation. So there is a design uh, which uh, achieves uh, safety, namely the, the prevention of, of, of the creation of, of these islands uh, of solid. Uh, which imposes both an upper and a lower bound on the voltage being applied. And uh, this feedback is given uh, by, by these expressions. So the feedback, the, the, the heating is reduced if the heat flux is high and it is increased if the deficit of uh, the total energy uh, is high. Um, there is a there is a there is a condition there is a choice for for the gain that is needed, uh, and the analysis is done on a triangular chain of control barrier functions given here, of which in this uh, system of three um, differential inequalities, one is autonomous and the other two are driven, and it can be shown that all the H's remain positive and the whole system. Um, um, uh, 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 satisfies the, cons uh, the constraint. So here's my last slide. In this slide, I'm showing you uh, a rather complicated experiment in which, uh, a numerical experiment, in which uh, a user of this system is attempting to apply a sinusoidal um, uh, voltage 
input to the system where the mean voltage is negative. In other words, uh, this user is trying to heat and cool and heat and cool the system, but in the mean to cool the system. Uh, our control cannot allow that. Our control permits the user to apply um, inputs uh, that, uh, uh, that advance the, um, uh, the, uh, 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 the liquid solid interface point, but not that retract it or create islands of liquid. So you see that the safety is ensured by, uh, uh, by preventing, uh, preventing the, the temperature from dropping below the melting temperature while uh, the, the system settles uh, ultimately to uh, a set point position of the interface. And with that, uh, I, uh, I want to thank you for your, your attention and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if, if, if the time allows.